Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out Fox Boss 9. And today what I'm gonna be doing is installing a new ignition box on my truck, which I've needed for some time now. Let me show you what I got going on here. I bought this cheap and expensive box just to throw it on there to have something above stock. And it did a pretty good job. I didn't notice a lot of difference, but for 150 bucks, I figured it was worth a shot. However, one day with no warning whatsoever, I went out to my truck and unfortunately it didn't start. Now the nice thing about it is whenever I hooked this thing up initially, I used a harness that allowed me to disconnect my coil from that ignition box and go back to the stock ignition system. I recommend the coil harness to ignition box accessory that I'll put in the link down below. What I'm doing though is going back to something that I know and that is a capacitive discharge ignition system, something similar to an MSD. Now I've run MSD in the past and they've been analog and they've been pretty good. Now the new MSDs, the digital ones, I guess they're pretty good also and I've always wanted one, but I see that there are some people that are saying that they fail relatively quick considering that you're paying you know, $220 or $210 for the box and uh, it's only lasting a couple years. Now, I don't know if the one that I bought is going to last any longer. However, it's also $40 cheaper than the MSD and the specs are nearly identical. Here's what I'm going to. The Hi Fire 6. It has the same specs as the MSD. It's multi spark, it has the same millijoules output as the MSD. As far as the voltage going into it is comparable, if not a little bit less than the MSD. So I figured for $40 less, this would be the way to go. Now I'm gonna put the link down below for this also. Click this link and uh, it'll take you to the box so you can get it for $170 shipped with no tax. So what I'm gonna do at this point is go ahead and pull off that old box and I'm gonna show you what you need to do to put this on a 1995 Ford F-150. So stay tuned. All right, it's really windy out so I apologize if there's any wind noise. The first thing that I did, of course, is remove my negative battery cable. The next thing I'm going to do, and you can see where I had plumbed in the wiring for the old ignition box, is I went right to a ground that goes right to the ground cable. This is where the old ignition box connected to. I'm going to reutilize that lug, and of course this is the cable that goes right to the negative terminal of the battery, so that's a really good ground. Here's the positive terminal that I used for this ignition box. And of course, this is the cable right here going to the battery directly. So this is a really good positive point too. So I'm gonna reutilize these. Uh, I'm gonna have to get some new connector ends for the uh, new box unless it has it in there, which I don't think that it does, but we'll get to that whenever we get to that. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to uh, remove these screws that hold the ignition box in and uh, take off the, the terminals that run to the leads to the ignition box and uh, we'll go from there. Now that I got that box loose, what I'm gonna do is uh, unplug it, pull the wiring out. I'll show you the harness over there, what we need for the new install. And uh, we'll get all this out of the way so we can get to the important part. And that's talking about this ignition box, which I'm real excited to get this on because it definitely has a lot more power than this thing did. All right, so I also have this harness that I'm gonna put a link down below and I wanna show you real quick. Okay, what you get whenever you order the harness separately, it's just this little piece here. And all it does is it has some leads to it. You can see here and they go into these two pieces. And what this does is allow you to directly on these Fords unplug the coil and then uh, plug this into the coil and then take your old coil hook up and plug that into here. But you want to pay attention to the colors of the wires, follow the instructions that come with your ignition box and with your coil harness that you purchase and receive. The yellow goes to the positive coil. The black goes to the coil negative. The red wire, again, these are on the harness, goes to a switched 12 volt source. And then the green wire goes to what would be your points or your signal coming from your magnetic trigger or whatever the triggering device is. But this thing saves you a lot of time. Now, can you install this box without the harness? Absolutely. You can do the hard wiring and patch into all the wires that are needed. But the nice thing about this is if on down the road, like in my case, I had a failure, I literally reached in and unplugged this from the coil, 
took my coil plug that was plugged into this, unplugged it out of the harness, and then plugged that factory harness back into the stock coil, or aftermarket coil in this case, but plug it back into the coil, and I was able to drive it immediately because sometimes the ignition boxes do fail. This makes it really nice and easy to do. Whenever you open your box for your MSD High Fire, this is what you get. Uh, you know, all the leads that go to the box itself, um, and don't be intimidated by this. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. If you have installed a few boxes after a period of time, you just realize it's all the same. Uh, there's just going to be different wires that used that are used for different reasons. Some of them you will use, some of them you won't. I already know that I most likely won't use this one here. And uh, same here. Uh, a lot of these connectors and that you may or may not use, but they do include them, so that's kind of nice. Um, the box itself, really nice. It, it looks like some sort of a extruded aluminum. I'm not sure if that's the case, but it's all about heat transfer. It's built real well. If you have a four or six cylinder, you need to pull off one of these ends. I'm not sure which one. It's just torque screws that hold it on, and there's some dip switches that you flip to change it. But all that's in the instructions. But this is what it looks like, so what I'm going to do is get this thing positioned. I'm going to check the length of these wires to see if they're going to go to where I want them to, and at that point, uh, start making my connections and terminations to get this thing to fire off. So let's go ahead and start and jump into that, and I'll come back whenever we got a little bit more done. All right, so I got the box in position basically, and I went ahead and just put in one screw just to give me an idea of what's happening here. And I can already tell that the battery wires, they're plenty long enough. I mean, this is way too much. I'm gonna have to cut those down. But these wires here, definitely not long enough. They're not gonna get to where I need them to be. Even with the uh, little bit of extension that I have with that harness, it's still not gonna make it. So what I'm gonna have to do is patch some wires to make it the rest of the way. Now, I could mount it in a different place, like back on the firewall there, up underneath, but I really don't wanna put it back there because of the engine compartment temperatures being a little bit high back there. I could probably put it back here somewhere by the air box and then lengthen the wires that go to the battery, and I might still do that, but I'm not real sure how I'm gonna handle it. All I know is the wires are definitely shorter than what that summit box is. So let's uh, let's think about that and I'll come back and show you what my solution was. All right, new game plan and I'm kind of excited. There's where the box is gonna be mounted now. And I'm happy about that because I wanted it over there in the first place. The only thing you have to watch is whenever they close your hood that it doesn't hit it. So you gotta make sure you mount it low enough. I like the fact that it's over with all the other electrical. There won't be any interference, there's no problem there. This allows it to be accessed a lot easier whenever I check for uh, spark and stuff like that because there's a, a little port here that has a red light that flashes that lets you know if everything's working okay. The only thing I have to do is lengthen these two wires. Now these wires here are 14 gauge so I have to go up a, a gauge to lengthen them which uh, I have the wire to do that. But the nice thing is is all the other wires reach where they need to go easily. I mean they're definitely going to make them there. So I can go up and around the brake booster. I'll put my convoluted tubing on here and uh, make it look nice. Boy, am I happy it's there. Again, sorry about the shadows. It's just the time of day. And uh, we'll jump into this and see if we can get this where it's running for you. All right, to clarify a little bit more about how that harness works, here you can see the stock lead that goes into the coil. This is from the factory. Now the coil's not, but the setup for the coil is exactly like the factory coil. What you do is you unplug this from the coil, and then at that point, here's the harness that you get. What you do is you plug the factory harness into the harness that you buy for the aftermarket ignition, just like that. That's, that's it, it's made a connection now to the ignition box. And then this part of the harness plugs into the coil. Just like that, and you're all done. That's it, you don't have to patch into any wires or anything else. Now you can see what I was saying, if you have a problem with your ignition box, which some of them inherently do, it's real easy to fix. All you have to do on the roadside is unplug this, unplug this, plug this into the coil, just like it was from the factory, and you're all set. You're back on the road and you're driving. So that's why I enjoy having that harness, because it's really easy to make the wiring connections and also in case there's a problem. Everything is pretty much connected at this point uh, as far as the leads go 
for the control of the box. I've got convoluted tubing on here. It's always a good idea to pick some of this stuff up to have it laying around. It just makes it a little bit look a little nicer and also it uh, protects the wires. But I have it rounded behind the brake booster and then of course we just seen how that plugs in there. I'm going to show you the connections though uh, with that harness. And this is what the instructions show. What you got here is the wiring setup for the Ford TFI harness. And you can see here it's got uh, yellow, black, red, and green. And that's going to be the part number that I give you. And uh, just so happens that it lined up with the old one, just like the old one was set up. So uh, orange goes to yellow, black goes to black, red goes to red, white goes to green. And uh, of course, white's the signal wire. Almost in all these ignition systems, white's the signal wire. Uh, red is a uh, switched 12 volt and then the black and the uh, orange of the box or the black and the yellow of the harness uh, that's going to be connected to the uh, positive and negative of the uh, coil. The coil has a, a positive and a negative so everything's hooked up. is not that difficult to do there so what I need to do at this point is lengthen those wires that go for the battery and it says that I can hook the black wire to a chassis ground. I don't know if I really want to do that. If I'm going to lengthen the wire of the battery positive, I might as well do it to the battery negative also on the box, the leads on the box. And it says that those are uh, 14 gauge uh, that comes with the box. They said if you're going to lengthen them to jump up a gauge, which in this case you go down a number, which would be a 12 gauge. So I'm going to run a 12 gauge wire all the way over to where I had the stuff hooked up originally. And uh, hopefully at that point we can fire this thing up and see how it runs. Let me show you what I got here and uh, you can be the judge. I went ahead and ran a 10 gauge wire over to the connection, which is right here. So it's all along here. You don't need 10 gauge. You only need 12 gauge. I just happen to have 10 gauge that was the right size. Of course, there's 10 gauge ground also. There's the 10 gauge ground going right to the ground of the battery. I had to fix my terminal, it was messed up. And then uh, this is the 10 gauge positive and I put it through this tubing. Of course, it goes back through those clips. Of course, back behind the brake booster. And then you can see it's coming out here. It just sits behind there. And again, I wired this up um, I've got to clip off those extras, but it's all hooked up. And uh, then I taped off this magnetic lead, which I knew I didn't need. Um, that's going to be uh, just tucked away here, out of the way. Now we'll go ahead and fire this thing up. All right, so the camera might vibrate a little bit, but let me go ahead and jump in the truck and we'll fire it up. And maybe you might be able to see the blinking light down there, I'm not sure. All right, so it looks like that it started up. It's really noisy because that fan, it's got a clutch on it. Until that decides to kick off, it's gonna be kind of noisy. I can already tell that it's running a little bit smoother, but I can also tell that it's running a little different because the battery was disconnected. So the computer has to go through a new learning cycle to see basically what's what. I'll tell you the one big plus that I am really happy to have back And that's my cheap old tachometer, which it's, the sun's right on it and it's dusty, but I am so glad to see that running again. <laughs> I've been going without. Yeah, it's smoother. There's not a, 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 a stutter there, but yeah, we'll uh, let this thing relearn itself and drive it for a few days. We'll see how that works out. Of course, this thing sounds better. Thing seems to be pretty good. I got a little squeak in my alternator there, but there's the box, and I'll try to get it close. And you can see the red light that's glowing there. It tells you that the condition of the uh, battery source is good, and everything's working okay. So that looks like it. Looks like the truck is <laughs> finally back to running condition. 
the way it was a few years back, uh, what I need to do uh, definitely is go through, change the oil, and I have to change transmission fluid on it, and this thing will be ready for tow season. So I'm ready. I'm ready to uh, go ahead and get pulling this camper. That's basically why I need to keep this truck running. And of course I use it for business too. So I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments, uh, leave them below. I'll try to answer your questions. Uh, if you like this video, click like or subscribe. And if you'd like to purchase this box and the harness uh, that I've used in this video, click the link down below. It'll send you right to it and you'll get it really cheap. Right now as it runs, it's $170. And again, that's about $40 cheaper than what you can buy the MSD box that does the exact same thing. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for more. Bye.